Hello game devs. In this video, we're gonna talk about terrain in theory opposed to in practice. Uh, we're not gonna talk about how to implement terrain, but rather how to design a good one. Uh, we're gonna take a look at Far Cry 3 and maybe some of the Outer Wilds afterwards. Uh, so one of the things about believable terrain, uh, believable terrain obeys logic. The logic that uh, is, is governed by a set of laws derived from the interaction of erosion ecology and geology so what i mean by erosion is like the application of for uh, external forces so like weather uh, this includes rivers um, foot traffic so you know human presence or animal presence uh black holes um you know uh, anything that might erode the uh, uh erode the world uh and that's obviously how it interacts depends on what kind of geology is there but we'll get to that in a second uh the ecology uh, and, and, you know, and in erosion, you know, we see this like in the Grand Canyon, right? So we, the, we see that the Grand Canyon eroded over uh, many, many years. Um, there's also like the Cappadocian ferry chimneys. Uh, these things are uh, uh, occur due to natural erosion with a uh, specific geological event, a volcano uh, that happened during a specific time. So it's really interesting kind of terrain just based off of some of the internal logic of that area. And we also see this in the, the Great Lakes, right? That's glacial er erosion. Um, so beyond that, we, we, go to geolo uh, uh, we go to ecology. Um, that's like the natural development of life in the terrain. So like plants um, that grow um, in the patterns that they grow them in, um, uh, you know, which is, is pretty normal. Um, and we, we, see the, we see ecology like when we see beavers dam up an area. Uh, or when an invasive species like kills off a lot of trees, uh, like for instance, the gypsy moth um, kills a bunch of trees, uh, a bunch of oak trees around here. So those are kind of older hardwood trees, uh, which would give way to other kind of uh, worlds, uh, uh, other other kinds of uh, younger trees to grow up. So it will change the the landscape. Uh, and then we've also got geology, which is like the type of uh, rocks that are in the earth and then the area and the like tectonic or volcanic activities. So all of this is the interaction between them. Um, and it, we can kind of see this in, uh, uh, in here uh, as we, we take a look. Uh, we've got some erosion, which is roads um, but that are human made. And those wear a path throughout the, the terrain. Uh, we've also got uh, um, you know paths coming up here as well, uh, but we've also uh, we can see that we've got a, a, an island with a bunch of rocks, and this these rocks seem to be uh, upheaved. They also seem to be pretty smooth and round, opposed to kind of a, uh, you know more of a jagged uh, appearance, um, and that's due to the fact that there is uh, ecology on top of it. So based off the weather, based off of the location in the world. Uh, these rocks are uh, covered in moss, covered in tr uh, trees, things that can grow there. Now, this would be different if we were in the alpine Rocky Mountain forest, right? Uh, the Rocky Mountains, they have very little uh, uh, weather going on. It's very, very cold. So there's just not as many opportunities. So, you know, the, the kind of jaggedy mountain range we see here might actually fit very well also um, in, you know, other areas that just based off of similar geology. So uh, how do we make terrain? Um, the one thing uh, that we want to look in Far uh, Cry and other video games is terracing. So video game developers uh, have to balance believability of terrain with like playability. So if we wanted to design a natural looking terrain, we do a, a couple things uh, that are a little bit of a trick. Um, so the way you should think about terrain is by a series of terraces um, or a series of floors. So imagine yourself uh, designing a house that has a bunch of randomly shaped floors and they're at random heights or, you know, semi-random. They obey a, a pattern of geology and erosion, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so game developers, what we do is we create those terraces. So for instance, down here, there's this big flat plane here. And then up here, we've got this terrace on top of this rock. We've got another flat part right here. And then we have this lookout station. Oops, I was crouching. And then we've got this lookout station, which is another flat part. So all of these flat terraced areas, 
they're connected by a series of ramps. So uh, uh, those ramps are the access points. You might think of them as hallways if you were designing a uh, uh, you know an, inter an inside environment. Um, but the series of ramps go from one. So we've got a ramp from this platform to this platform. That's right here this platform to this one we've got this ramp and then we've got also uh, uh no actually it looks like that's it it's just got that one ramp so you can think about it if you're if you're designing a game from the top down and you're trying to de design outside terrain environments think about them as a series of floor areas that the ai are going to want to path through because this is also thinking about ai pathing right if every single thing was co uh, collidable or if they if ai had the ability to tra traverse like this area here this big rock face because they were thinking about doing it it would make their ai run much slower so what we do here is uh, we block off uh, those areas and we fill them in. Now, if you're playing Breath of the Wild, this might be like climbing up the area. Th those might be all the climbing areas in between, but we kind of consider them walls and kind of block off the space. Um, doo -doo -doo. Let's go over to the other side. Uh, we've got... Doo -doo -doo. So over here, we've got another terrace, and then we've got uh, that terrace is connected to our terrace via um, via a ramp. So that's kind of how we design out maps. Uh, and then we d we fill in the middle parts with the rules and regulations based off of, you know, what kind of uh, environment are we uh, thinking that this is going to be? What kind of weather occurs here? So... Um, So there's a couple points of uh, terrain that you're gonna take a look at as well. Uh, first, we've got the height map here. Uh, the height map is this, think of it like as a giant tissue that's draped across the top, um, or maybe like some of that kinetic sand that can you can kind of pile up into big kind of sand sculpture-y stuff, uh, but it doesn't, but you can't like make um, you can't make little caves with it because it falls in on itself. So um, in Unity, at least, uh, the terrain tool is going to give you this like tissue um, uh, object. And it's going to be a big plane, and you can pull it up and down. Um, uh, that part, um, you can see all of like all this ground plane area right here. This is all that terrain object. Um, and Far Cry did not use Unity, but the, it's the same um, uh, stuff and everything. So the second... Um, so, so the actual thing that this is uh, also referred to as the height map or the terrain height map, uh, we, we might use samples, and Gaia is the tool that we use samples of, of real-life height maps um, in order to, uh, to create realistic environments really quickly uh, that we kind of combine together. Oh, those cassowaries kind of kill me if I go too close. Um, so the... Uh, so the, this is the height map. The other thing, uh, the thing. So we're not going to be able to create like overhangs or caves or anything like that. The way we do that, if we wanted to, is to buy, uh, bring in uh, large game objects that are terrain objects, and those are like the climbable objects. Uh, maybe it's um, this hut floor area. Maybe it's uh, a bunch of rocks or geometry that is uh, pre-modeled and brought in and then used uh, uh, multiple times spun around in different areas. Sorry, the cassowaries were stalking me. Um, so uh, so the terrain objects uh, are, are combined with the terrain to make something realistic and believable. Uh, and you know, often we'll show um, uh, areas of erosion or whatever um, uh, more, more distinctly than trying to do it with the terrain tool. So you won't actually use a combination of tools. Um, the, the th uh, you know, and then in Unity, we also have, um, uh, when we're we're painting the terrain, um, that that height map tissue, uh, we have a painted terrain here that has a blend between several materials. Um, we've got this uh, this dirt. We've got this darker dirt, which is probably a different material because um, they are trying to get those uh, tracks going. Um, and then we've got this uh, kind of clover grass uh, floor and the the rocky bits in between so we've probably got several different textures going on that are blended together on top of the height map 
Uh, and then these props, the environmental props are added as well as things that might not matter as much. These are particle, or not particles, these are billboarded objects. You know, grass and stuff is really thin. Sorry, those cassowaries, they're dangerous. Um, so um, the grass in here is really just thin objects uh, that are billboarded or, or spun about in different ways and uh, applied, you know, like a little wind zone to make them move around. So, uh, and scale and stretch or whatever. Um, this is pretty normal. Um, and these are decorative objects that oftentimes will be d uh, reliant on, um, you know, on your processing power, your graphics power. I'm sure we've all seen uh, clips of people who are playing um, uh, first person shooters who think they're hiding in a bush only to realize that their settings were too high and they're not hiding in anything at all. Um, so you decorate that, uh, you decorate, uh, you, you paint on the terrain here, uh, you decorate with trees that look natural and look like they're supposed to be there, that obey the rules of erosion and ecology. And finally, you know, you also create far away objects that are like this big mountainside. Now these don't need actual terrains. These are just little, not little, they're very big, but they're just 2D images or very slightly 3D images that allow us to create depth and you know that's one thing that's really important to think about is um, the distance between uh, how far away the user is going to be um, and how much detail you need to provide. So um, let's go to a game that is a little bit more um, stark but has the kind of the same things. <coughs> Let's go to the Outer Wilds. Now the Outer Wilds is a great example of a, a lot of varied terrain. We just saw, you know, kind of a natural looking one. Uh, but even in this first uh, area, uh, we see a lot of the same kind of techniques applied. Let's load up. So even though this is, you know, extremely stylized, um, they're still going to be obeying some of the rules of, uh, of environment design. Uh, so if we wake up in this little gully, you know, we see, um, you know, we see these really tall trees, we see some lower foliage. Um, and we also see this blending between um, ground textures, right? So this is the spot where a lot of traffic happens. There's very little grass and there's a little more grass coming in and then more and more. Um, so the, uh, so they're still thinking about where, you know, where people are walking, that kind of thing. Uh, the other thing is, and let's get out into the space so that we can kind of fly around a little bit. So you'll notice that um, their terrain for this planet specifically is extremely sharp and jagged um, with very tall uh, uh, blocked chip, you know, kind of like chipboard uh, blocked out, um, almost like it's carved, but it's not. So all of this terrain, you know, has water in it, which seems to have eroded down a gully. Uh, but if we go over to here, we see that this uh, um, this crater here also created a large impact, and that impact also sheared off a bunch of rock, um, and also these hills. Now, obviously, it's not really super realistic between this very round thing and then these kind of uh, uh, strange hills that get stuck onto the other side, uh, but they still obey kind of an internal logic of the way that they're shaped and all that kind of stuff. So let's go to something a little bit more weird. 
and we'll do autopilot. Um, so, you know, it, it, you can see a lot in Outer Wilds. I'm not going to be doing any quest things, but uh, even though that there is a lot going on, the, the worlds themselves kind of obey the same rules of ecology, erosion, and geology um, when, they're, when they were being designed so that you can kind of see how something different has happened. Ooh. And actually, I went a little bit too far. So this planet is the Bramble Patch. The Dark Bramble, excuse me. So the thing we can see here is that it was infected by a giant um, uh, a, a tree thing. Uh, so we've got these large chunks of uh, terrain that are being hoisted above, uh, kind of like it was burst, uh, uh, like all these objects kind of burst out from being uh, from the inside. And that's the kind of the way the Dark Bramble works. So maybe a little bit of spoilers. Um, but the, the same geo uh, geometry and geology here, it's a little bit different, uh, than what, uh, we were seeing on the other planet. So those are different kind of rocks and textures. And then because this is a more natural object, the dark bramble, it, uh, it follows kind of more natural swirls and, and jags and has thorns and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, the combination of these two can really help. Uh, bring, you know, thinking about these rules can really bring things to life. Oops. And then let's see, where else can we go? There we go. Let's go to Giant's Deep. So whereas uh, Giant's Deep, this is going to be more of like a wet planet. Actually, you know what? Maybe not. Let's go to the Ember Twin. So the Ember Twin oh, it looks like I might crash into the sun. We'll see. Oh, I definitely flew into the sun. Oh, well. Amber Twin is behind a sun, and I flew into it. So now let's take a look at uh, another planet. Let's go check out the, the Ember Twin. Uh, it has a different kind of geology, uh, but it still obeys kind of its internal logic. Here we are. So the Ember Twin here is kind of, uh, kind of a, a sand planet. It's got a lot of desert going on, so it does not have a lot of uh, life. It does have a little bit. Oh. There we go. Missed it a little bit. All right, here we go. Just need to land and then let's get out. So got a spacesuit on. So the Ember Twin is a sandy planet. Uh, there's not a lot um, of, uh, of, of ecology here. So the little that is, is growing kind of in clusters, which you might expect from a sand area, um, just because there's usually water coming from only a few very specific sources. Uh, and then the terrain here, it obviously has a different texture. 
Um, but we also see this kind of, you know, honestly, like fairy chimney or kind of um, uh, Grand Canyon-y kind of effect. Um, of course, the sun goes away just as soon as we start um, looking at things. But that's okay. Because uh, we also see that there's this huge canyon here. Now, what might cause this? Uh, in this case, the planet is go undergoing uh, severe erosion, um, uh, as we will see as it comes around in a second. So the severe erosion is the the sister planet that we've got going. Um, uh, it takes all the uh, sand or all the loose material and kind of they trade off and on. Uh, so we, in this area, we see something, you know, very different in kind of a really cool way. And it makes it really unique. So, um, you know, we see a little bit of human uh, uh, contact and sprawl, but not a lot. Um, so we really have to rely on those rules to make uh, an interesting environment. Oops. And so we just kind of have these like big chunky um, plateau areas and you kind of have to hop around now. And that also matches our mechanics, right? Because we're in a low gravity situation. So part of the terrain is about supporting the mechanics. Uh, which is why also when we were on the home planet, we didn't see a lot of bridging and that kind of thing. Uh, the other thing we also see is like random trees that seem to grow in space like conditions and then give you complete oxygen, which make no sense. But hey, you know, it, it makes sense in this universe that trees can do that. Uh, so that's all I have. Uh, if you have questions uh, or if you uh, if you have a really interesting environment in a real world uh, setting um, or in a unique game setting that you'd like to share, post it down below. If you have questions about um, how to design trains, also post them as well. Other than that, I will see you in class.